I moved to Oregon in 1978 from Arizona, and um, I have family here. And they're very into bow hunting and gathering mushrooms and huckleberries and very outdoorsy people, my family. Earth Dynamics has always been uh, a focus in my life since I've been very young and uh, my first two years of college was in earth science and geology. So when I came to Oregon as a young adult, I pursued that. Fungi, fungus, are we see them as mushrooms. And it's really important to understand that for the mushroom to, to fruit above ground, something has to happen below ground. About 14 or 15 years ago, the forest floor was going through some type of dehydration where there was not enough moisture. What I was observing in the forest was the dehydration was being caused by too much vegetative mass competing for limited moisture. It does help for the forest to be thinned. It's okay to have a shelter canopy forest where there's a spot where there's a bunch of little new growth, that's fine. I'm not talking about going in and cutting down every little tree. I don't mean that. I'm talking particularly about competition uh, for moisture and nutrients and minerals. These lateral limbs all hanging down, this is probably quite a few years of growth right here, to the forest floor. If you were to have a lightning strike or a man-made fire, it would climb up this into that tree, which you climb into that tree, which you climb into that tree. And if it's in the vicinity of, of a, more, a mature tree or an old growth tree, then you're gonna catch that tree on fire because you gave it access to its crown by allowing this to be a cluttered forest. The forest has a natural balance that keeps it resilient and less prone to wildfires or mega wildfires. It, this is a historical fact. It's unbalanced right now. The forest, when it becomes unbalanced, is like to me like a teeter-totter, and at some point, the fulcrum is gonna tip. When it tips, it's sudden. It's not 10 years or 20 or 40 or 100. It's real fast. When the forest loses resiliency, the only way for nature to correct this imbalance is wildfire. We're in a situation now where the teeter-totter has tipped. It tipped a few years ago. And so the forest decline is accelerated now. It's, it's, it's at a fast pace. This tree here is incredible. And if you'll notice the scaffolding, it doesn't start till nearly 40 feet up. And if you'll also notice there's no really serious uh, concentration of new growth of trees in the last 40 years that would reach to its canopy. So if there was a wildfire in here, this tree's gonna make it. When you suppress the uh, forest fires in the forest and like we've done and not thin them, then there'll be a lot of uh, lateral limbs, horizontal limbs reaching down to the forest floor, which will lead to the canopy and we'll have a crown fire. But not in the case of this, this is a good situation here. After doing this for three years, Forest Under Stress, hoping to educate people and do Rotary Club presentations and school presentations about fungi and, and forest dynamics and the health of the forest, I decided to make a little movie. It's nine minutes long. It's called Forest Under Stress, the movie. It took me three years to create the movie, uh, a year to write the script with my daughter, Mika, uh, Bravo Ramirez. The reason I wanted to make the film Forest Under Stress was because in nine minutes I felt I could get across the science that I have observed for the last 40 years in a simple format of a very complicated subject. And I believe anyone who watches it will go away with some knowledge they didn't have before or a lot depending on the person. It's magical because it transforms you if you stop and think about it, you're immediately aware that you're in something very old and you're in something that survived so many seasons. We have to protect them from that. We have to protect them from the wildfires. 